What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing. Come back at you with another video. And today you guys have voted and it is time for me to drill that 20 gallon tank. So I am here at Clarksville Reefing Reptile in the back seat and I decided to bring my son along. Hey Daniel, say what's up. So we are going to go in that store and see if you know, either one, Andrew's got a 20 gallon tank already drilled, so I could just, you know, buy that one, or he can drill the one that's in the back of my car. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, so I got everything that I needed to get done. He's gonna drill the tank, and I may have bought some more corals, and I don't have a QT tank, so now I gotta make a makeshift QT tank real quick for these corals. And I think I'm on bar time with the two year old. All right guys, so what happened was I needed to take the tank to get it um, drilled. But my friend Mike was like, hey, you know, there's like this big sale at Seven Seas and they're doing like 30% off. I was like, oh yeah, go grab me some. So he came here, he grabbed me some, and then I realized I needed to quarantine them. So I did a bunch of dipping and everything. And then um, I went to the uh, my LFS, Clarksville Reef and Reptile, and then I, you know, brought in the tank, he said he'd drill it, and then I looked at some corals. I got a problem. So, yeah, I used a little four gallon Pico tank, and now I got some corals in here, and they're looking pretty fire, I must say. Yes, I do like my LPS. Um, I don't even know what some of these are. Like one of these is a war coral right there. That's a favia. You got an acan or a micromusa back there. A branching blasto which had some aptasia on it. Um, what is it? Something fields. Um, Monopora. This guy right here is just gorgeous. Then you got another. I think that's a favites and a favia or parites. I don't know. Something like that. They're just gorgeous. But yeah, so now they're in quarantine. So I'm waiting for the 20 gallon to get drilled. These are gonna be in quarantine probably for about a couple weeks, two weeks at most. And then uh, dip them again and put in the tank, hopefully. Um, I don't have anything on this guy in the back. You can kind of see, hold on a second. So yeah, that branching blasto looked way better in blue light. Um, you couldn't see all the algae that was on. I dipped it with hydrogen peroxide, um, kind of just sprayed it on there and dropped it down. You can kind of see in the little U channel, there's definitely an Aptasia that I just smashed with Aptasia X. So hopefully all this, you know, is going to be um, healthy and ready to go by the time um, their quarantine's up. Don't judge me. I know every one of you have gone to a, a reef shop and you said, mm, let me go buy that. And then you're like, oh crap, if I buy this many, I'm gonna get a deal. So you buy that many. It happens. It happens. All right guys, so I got all my fittings picked out. I even got the little strainer with the elbow going on and my uh, little standing drain that goes in the back. My LFS drilled it right here. So I have a bulkhead here. So the plan is, to do something that looks like this and then have the pipe going down this way and then probably underneath here, like between this space, have the return line come up over and shoot out this way in the tank. And I am watching my son. Yep. As I'm making water. This is called multitasking. It's really hard to do. So I'm actually doing a water test on this bulkhead because this leaked my uniseal again. So I just put a bulkhead here, so I'm doing kind of a water test and filling this container up with this crazy child screaming. The question is, do I glue or not glue the pipes in right now with this demon screaming around and running into everything? Risky decision. So I decided to glue it outside with my son and I took it away. And he's sitting here throwing a tantrum that I took it away from him. How dare I take the tank away? Yeah, you can kind of tell that I'm doing some plumbing work on my workbench. <laughs> this is called parenting. Just let him stay in the car and play around. It works out pretty well. I see you, buddy. You're up to no good. Now, good life choice is to do a water test, so let's do a water test. Well, the water test, throw it all the way up to the top, 
it appears that the bulkhead is holding and that there's no water coming out. And I'm still entertaining this kid. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, that water is really high with that right there. I'll probably angle it down kind of like from vertical to a little bit like offset, like 60 degrees from vertical. But everything looks good. I'm glad I did the test first. I'll let it sit for a while because I'm in no rush. And water test two is looking good. Well, I guess now it's time to uh, start moving these corals into the main display. But before I do that, I'm gonna dip them one last time. I've already checked them for everything I could think of. That branching um, blasto, I guess that's what it's called, was just covered and hopefully um, I have killed all the hair algae on it, the aptasia, and even some bubble algae. So these have been in here for about three weeks, going on three weeks, and I've dipped them in Coral MD and freshwater dips. Now we're gonna do a revive dip and get them ready for the main display. Corals are dipped and placed in the tank. Now I have started to clean up some of the salt creep on this post and then the salt creep off the wall because I wanna continue this contact paper all the way around. I don't even know if I might go over here, I don't know, I have enough. But I'll probably just do it like yay high just so that it's a little bit in line with the tank because I don't, I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at all that salt. This is seriously protecting the wall. Highly recommend you get some contact paper and put it back there. All right guys, so here's the game plan. I'm gonna put the 20 gallon tank up on the stand. I'm gonna measure the distance from here down that I think is gonna be about adequate to come across. It's going to um, have a 90 degree bend right about here. I'm gonna shoot off and I'm thinking I'm gonna go behind the post right there and then come in and kind of like kind of have the pipe kind of butted up against it hopefully to mitigate any vibration it's going to dump down into my refugium section so that could give me a little bit more turnover in my refugium section let's hope this all works out now if you guys remember my plumbing video you knew that i had the foresight to put this little union here this uh, um it's a hydro seal uh three quarter inch union I'm going to, or ball valve I guess it would be, I'm going to kind of probably do a bunch of soft fitting for everything where I'm gonna make a 90. It's gonna kind of come up and it's gonna kind of land right here. So it'll be kind of to the side of the, um, where the drain is, the bulkhead. So pretty much for everything I'm doing, I'm gonna kind of just be measuring it out, going by feel, and hopefully it will all work out in the end. Doing a bunch of soft fitting. What I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna have them all in separate sections. So I'll have the return section as one, and the drain section as one, and hopefully, with based off the soft fitting, if it looks good, I can just kind of um, glue it all together and then just drop this puppy in and glue it up and should work maybe i don't know it's really hard to get back there so who knows what the heck's going on all right so these are my rough estimates now for the downpipe i'm pretty sure that's almost dead on for where i want to be at and this will be the connecting point to go into the refugium this might be a tad long that might be just a tad long I know that this is exactly what I want to be for the distance and everything and that might be that is definitely a tad high so what I'm going to do is remeasure and make sure that this pipe here is the correct length because I think it might be an inch too low where it's going to be almost horizontal with um, the sump and I want it to be just a little higher so I'm going to remeasure but pretty much this is going to be the gist of it I'm going to drop this one into place first Actually, yeah, I probably drop that one in place first and kind of figure out where I want to put this pump or this pipe going in. Doing this when you have a freaking setup already is really hard because it's, you know, you only got one shot to get this pipe, you know, right and this plumbing good. It is complete after a lot of heartache. So I had to have my dad help me out and there was quite a bit of a two man job going here because you can kind of tell. There is no space back here to work. Yeah, hand, one hand length, less than a hand length. So I was able to get these all in 
in one major section and kind of just plumb them in the rest of the way. Um, so you can kind of see the main section with the drain is coming to here. I was able to plumb all that all at once and then I just kind of pieced it together the rest of the way. The T going in the back, so that's a, um, the Hydra Seal that I got and thank God that it has um, the adjustable unions on it because um, I was able to take that off and kind of glue it into uh, that union. But you can kind of see on this one, there's um, some pipe there and you're asking yourself, well, Mike, why is there pipe on that one? Well, I done messed up and uh, glued it without putting the little seal back on it. So um, I had to cut it apart and I was like, crap, I don't have another one of these. And I realized there was another uh, hydro seal that I could just kind of pop off and use it. So thank God I did that. But if I ever have to use that hydro seal and that uh, ball valve in the future, I'm gonna need to get new pieces. So I kind of like this little section here because um, you know, I, I made this so that it's not glued in so I can kind of rotate it. And I kind of turned it to the side so that way it's going to shoot this way. Now, I'm going to, I think I'm going to raise this up a little bit. I made a siphon break on this side so there will be water kind of shooting off to the side. Um, that way we won't back siphon all this water out of the tank. So I guess it's time to turn it on and let's see what happens. All right, the moment of truth. Oh my God, it's so hard to get under this tank. Turn, puppy. Oh my god, why aren't you turning? Use the right hand. Somewhere? Oh, there we go. All right. And it is working. Holy cow. I cannot believe that this is working. All right. Time to wait and see and see if I got any leaks. So I had to stop filming because uh, this water level got really high really quick. There's a lot of water coming through with that Reef Octo Pulse uh, Varius 8 pump. So <laughs> I had the, um, the valve probably about three quarters open. Bad idea, it needs to be at half open at the most and it's probably between a half and a quarter open. Um, so very light flow going into the tank. You know, I don't know the gallons per hour coming in. I'd probably say it's, mm less than a hundred gallons per hour. I might increase the flow. It has now been about 20 hours later and there is not a single leak here. And I had an extra piece of acrylic laying around and it serendipitously fits that exact length on the top. So I'll have like a little nice um, evaporation seal. And I mean, I could cut it and drop it down and make it flush, but I kind of like it. And it's actually just long enough to kind of give some space here. I might have another piece that I can kind of cut and kind of quickly, you know, put it on the back end if I wanted to add fish in here, like a fire dart fish or something, because I love them. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Like, I think I'm in this for under a hundred bucks. Now, granted, these are those innovative marine frag racks that I had um, when they gave me um, some money because, um, there's this little spot in perfection on the tank, so they gave me 200 bucks in credit for it, which is pretty nice. And yes, that little spot is like a weird warp, and you can't get it with an algae scraper or anything. It's almost like they overheated it, and it warped the glass. So yeah, fun times there. But you know, I got some nice frag racks out of it. So if you guys were to make your own um, you know, tank that you plumbed in, I would always say to have the foresight to add like a ball valve somewhere where you can do future plumbing and tie it off of. It really, really helps. Um, you know, obviously you don't have to use this nice Schedule 80 and blue pipe. I had it laying around and I only had to buy like 45 bucks in fittings. The other like 60 or the other 20 bucks I had to buy some other stuff because I'm upgrading my plumbing outside for my um, totes because those brute trash cans are leaking with the Uniseal, so I just got some bulkheads. But other than that, I mean, this is super easy. The My LFS did it for like 30 bucks to drill the tank and threw in a bulkhead there. I had the other fittings, I added a strainer on to the top, and it's, you know, working really well. I'm just really happy with how this turned out. And now it's about time to start putting some frags in that tank. But before I do that, I gotta definitely put in a uh, pump in here. And I'm gonna be doing a video on that very soon. So keep, um, you know, keep my channel in mind. S hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and you will be seeing some more reviews coming my way, a little bit of DIY how-tos. But until next time, guys, I will see you later.